Howdy folks, Carl Jorn here, Pioneer Agronomist for Northwest Indiana, here to answer some of your questions about uh, what we're looking at in terms of a heat wave uh, as we're going through the early reproductive stages of corn. Um, so I'm out here in a field today taking a look at some stuff that's right on the towards the end of R1, so getting out of the silking stage, still have pollen flying, but the majority of this crop is pollinated at this point, uh, moving into the R2 blister stage. Uh, so as you're asking yourself, um, what kind of impact are we going to see from this this forecast of mid 90s to upper 90 degrees for the next handful of days? It's a it's a sound question because we don't often experience this type of blast uh, specifically as we're going through the most vulnerable stage of the corn crop's life. Um, one thing to note: moisture stress is a far bigger uh, contributor to yield loss than heat stress is. So for those of us that have received uh, a little more rainfall over the last 10, 14 days. Uh, that's great news. That'll build in some more resilience for this uh, for this cornfield than those of us that have missed out or that are on um, more coarser textured soils. So impact of drought stress as you're going through the reproductive stages, um, specifically with respect to silking. Uh, for every four hours, we experience the, the corn canopy to be leaf rolled, you know, rolled up tight as a defensive mechanism to keep the, uh, the water loss to a minimum. Uh, according to Iowa State University research, we could anticipate about a 1% loss for every four hours of tight rolling. So uh, know that we'd experienced plenty of rolling for a lot longer than four hours uh, earlier this year as we we're going through the drought, but recognize that that did not have the impact that it does as you're going through the reproductive phases. Um, so with silking in particular, very important that we have a, a, a well-watered corn crop here. Uh, on the whole, I think we're feeling pretty good about that. So let's, let's brush aside the impact of water stress. Uh, what is this heat going to do to my corn crop? Uh, you all know, most of you know, corn is a, uh, it's an offspring. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a domesticated crop that came to us from Central America. Teosinte was the ancestor. And so that's a, that's a Central American tropical prairie grass, uh, a, a grass species. So it, closer to the equator, can handle the heat a whole lot better than you and I can. That aside, um, corn likes to be in that 75 to 90 degree range in terms of temperatures. Now it can handle upwards of 110 degrees with, with minimal, uh, minimal effect for short periods of time. The biggest thing to note is the duration in which we're experiencing those higher temperatures. Once you reach 95 degrees, that's when we're going to start to see this canopy here start to slow down its efficiency. We're not going to grow as well. We're not going to assimilate as many um, as many sugars and carbohydrates to pour into the ear um, and those reproductive structures. So no, this forecast of mid 90s, we're approaching a threshold of concern. Uh, what is that impact? Uh, again, based on some studies done from the Central Corn Belt, uh, day one, day two, and day three of 95 consecutive um, average daily highs uh, should not see ill effect with respect to yield. It isn't until you reach day four of, uh, of consecutive weather where you're reaching that 95 degree uh, daily average high. At that point, one would assume that you lose about 1% of yield potential. Now, as you move that along, let's say that we carry through that forecast and we have a fifth day of, uh, of that daily 95 or thereabouts for a high, then we can add an additional 2% yield loss. So the longer that that heat wave endures, the greater impact it has to the corn crop. Uh, heaven forbid we'd have a sixth day in the mid 90s, uh, you could add an additional 4% yield loss. So somewhere around 7% yield loss for six for six consecutive days in the mid 90s. Now, based on local conditions, that's going to infer how much yield potential we could lose. So check your local forecast, be mindful of what those daily high temperatures are, um, but know that corn as a tropical grass, it was built to handle hotter temperatures than you and I are. Um, and that since a lot of the area has decent moisture underneath it, uh, the more acute impact of hot weather is the, is the dryness that it often brings. Since we have moisture, we're not going to see as acute of a yield impact as previously noted. Um, last thing that folks are asking about is what should I do about my fungicide applications? Um, and that is a great question. As we talked about the, the 
corn leaf's um, defensive strategy to go ahead and and roll up those leaves when we're really in a um, in a in a more severe drought like scenario um, before the plant does that leaf rolling we will close the pores um, within the leaf within the leaf surface itself so those stomata they will begin to shut before we go to that kind of nuclear option of shutting down um, the amount of sunlight we can harvest through the leaf rolling. So what what does that mean from a fungicide application standpoint? Strongly advise making sure that we get those applications on prior to leaves rolling. And better yet, if we can manage for earlier in the day, uh, as opposed to the heat of the day, like I'm talking to you right now, um, or even the evening, anything that we can do to ensure that the plant's surface, the leaf surface is as receptive to the spray solution that we're trying to get on, that, that's going to be a, a, a huge benefit in terms of fungicide efficacy. Uh, no different than any other fungicide recommendation I make, Make sure it's it's based on your scouting. Uh, understand your your hybrid tolerance to certain diseases. We know that there's a there's a there's a a big disparity across the industry, especially with tar spot. Um, you know, we also consider gray leaf spot and northern corn leaf blight when making fungicide management decisions. Know that across most of Northwest Indiana, fields are awfully clean for the time being. So continue scouting, be vigilant, and um, ensure that that plant's leaf is receptive to the spray solution as we make that application. Coverage is key, so ensure you've got um, uh, sufficient gallons um, that, that we're putting out there with each spray. So again, in summary, uh, corn likes it a lot hotter than what you and I do. Um, once we reach 95 degrees, we're gonna start having an impact on yield. How great of an impact on yield are we gonna have? That's based on the number of days that we experience in those higher temperatures. Uh, for brief moments in time, corn can handle a lot hotter than 95 degrees, um, but, but that's the impact that heat stress can have on our corn crops, specifically during silking. If we're past silking, know that we still don't like it hot, but we can manage a whole lot better than we can as we're silking and receiving that pollen. Um, so those are the few things of note uh, to answer several of the common questions across the area at this stage in the game. Um, if you were to have any questions further, please don't hesitate to reach out to your local pioneer sales professional uh, or, or uh, your local agronomist like myself. Uh, so with that, I, uh, I leave you with uh, good, cool vibes for you, your corn crop, and uh, looking forward to seeing you on the other side of this heat wave. Until then, be safe and make sound decisions. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.